Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK. This is Fluid Ninja Live 1.3. With many new features, I advise you to take a look at uh, the change log available at the project homepage. And here we have a list of what happened since the latest release. And the same list is sorted to levels on a different page. So you could easily locate the new content. Now returning to the list, probably the most important change is uh, improved performance. What I have done is uh, introducing a completely new pressure solver. What is a pressure solver? Well, having a look at this chart, flow chart, you could see how the data flows in the Fluid Ninja Live simulation rendering pipeline. And here is this subcycle, the pressure subcycle. So the whole simulation stops here for a while and is refining a certain thing, namely the pressure field and how detailed the pressure field is. Now having a look at this level called critical settings, let us quickly compare two or three simulations. You could see the one on the left hand side is very crude, no details, and on the right is with nice turbulent flow. And you could notice that the left one comes with two render target writes, it's one iteration, one pressure subcycle, and the rightmost it's 16 iterations and 32 render target writings. The problem is that render target writing is a bottleneck in Unreal Engine 4. So uh, the new pressure solver is basically optimized to lower the number of render target writings and have a look. We have the same amount of details as the one with 32 render target writings, but the new pressure solver does this with only two render target writings. Probably I'm not going to get into the details how it is done, maybe very quickly. Having a look at the material, here is the old, the legacy pressure solver, which is still available in Ninja. And as you could see, this four texture sample node is basically examining the texel neighbors around the central texel. And the new pressure solver is examining a lot of texels in the same step, in the same time. And we are using a Gaussian-like distribution to make a weighted average of these neighboring texels and so in the end uh, we have more instructions per pixel but less render target writings so this is like um, somehow skipping the bottleneck it's not the amount of calculation that is lower but the way how calculation is distributed is like a trade-off situation Anyway, uh, let us have a look at uh, a brute force test level. This is smoke chamber level 13 and with solver 1, ah, I'm switching on the FPSO-meter, hopefully visible in the captured video. So you could see uh, this is level 13, the smoke chamber test with 20 of these fluid sim containers, each is 17. Um, 720 pixels yeah 720 pixel containers and 20 of them so pressure solver one produces an average well let's say 90 or 80 frames per sec on this level so uh, we are well below 100 fps and having a look at pressure solver two the same level but the containers are configured to use pressure solver 2. I'm selecting one of these containers, going to the details panel, selecting Ninja Live component, and as you could see, uh, 
this little uh, bull flag is off which means by default Ninja is using pressure solver 2 and have a look at the FPS ometer in the upper right corner we are almost 200 FPS well it's uh, the average is 180 190 approximately uh, so we could say that it's like mm, the performance is 150 percent better or at some in some cases it might be twice as good but it's definitely much faster than with solver one so uh, that was a major improvement and from now on uh, ninja is using this uh, pressure solver 2 by default let's have a look at the other features um, going back to this list it is detail maps now what is a detail map like there is a dedicated level 29 level 29 which uh, tries to explain this and let us have a look here we have a Voronoi or cell noise and on the right you could see a basic fluid simulation and so we are using the velocity field of the basic fluid simulation as a flow map to advect the Voronoi or cell noise of course this is like a user-defined noise so you could apply your own textures here but the point is if you compare these two um, simulations that we have like extra details and since it is almost like a post-process uh, thing there is uh, no com extra computational weight on the GPU so it comes almost like for free and we have a similar example here but with a combustion or flame like texture and the same thing here you could check the thing and draw with the mouse cursor in the viewport here <laughs> we set up a little fireplace by simply entering this trigger zone and <laughs> um, making the things fall and form a fireplace here we are instructed to enter uh, this volume it's the burning man anyway um, ah, and here finally we could possess this flaming palm so detail maps are all about uh, making these basic fluid simulations richer with no extra cost right and if you have a look at this palm you could see that when it stops the intensity of the flame is getting lower and this is because of this velo velocity dependent brush feature um, if you have a look at this palm it has an embedded ninja live fluid simulation container and under uh, live brush settings you could see this dampen brush below this velocity thing which means um, once uh, the pawn is moving slower or not moving at all the system is somehow dampening fading out or killing uh, the density of the brush and so this way uh, the whole thing is related to the intensity of the movement now this flaming pawn is just one possible example but here uh, I could give you another very practical example and so I'm visiting level 10B and I'm just placing the pawn to the right place here this is the bloodbath scene where we are running in this big pool of blood and as you could see when the pawn stops um, it stops steering the fluid around his feet in older ninja versions the fluid remained 
turbulent around the feed. And it was very disturbing. So by introducing this feature, we could really um, uh, link the fluid simulation intensity to the velocity, the moving speed of these interacting objects. Returning to this list of features, I would like to mention collision masking. And this feature is placed on level 3, which is simulation inputs. Um, let me quickly visit this new stage here. You could see this uh, X-shaped mask. And here we go. Um, basically, the mask is defining where the fluid can go inside the fluid simulation area. So, as you could see, the whole black rectangle is our fluid simulation area, but the mask is defining where fluids go. So it's like a collision mask. We have a few more things at this level. Um, quitting the palm and telling Ninja stop possessing the palm. And so, what next? Well, uh, it doesn't look like a big thing here. But if you're not colorblind, you could see these subtle changes in this yellow-green rectangle. And this is a material. And in the nearby stage, we have a similar situation. Um, velocity is defined by a dynamic material, and we have been channeling density through that material as well. So um, it could be advantageous when you would like to make your own choreography and define very precisely how in the timeline things happen like an explosion or a magical event by using materials and timeline it's very easy to make a choreography of how things happen comparing it to the old method basic ninja was supporting velocity by textures and density by textures which is fine but these are static compared to this uh, material defined velocity and density fields which are dynamic all right uh, let us visit one more stage here and this is um, scene capture camera stage 7 you might have seen this moving ball but here I made an example of how to use Niagara particles as density input for the simulation and we have a nearby experimental stage. We are using um, the same particle setup, but in this case we are capturing velocity as well. Have a read in the manual it is described and how it is done. Um, visiting the features list, you could see on the right column we have like a viscous, a high density fluids. And we are also experimenting with opaque materials, non-translucent materials. Well, these high viscosity opaque fluids are demonstrated on the same level, which is um, level 10B. So I'm going there. And uh, yeah, let's see what we have. Um, well, as an extreme example, uh, this thing would like to be uh, snow and on the nearby stage we have like a muddy puddle which lives a life of its own but the point is that it's muddy and on the nearby stage we have an orb flaming in the middle of this bloodbath again a high viscosity fluid and visiting the nearby stages um, here we have a turbulent flow of mud and you could push objects inside so it's interacting with the pound and all other objects I'm just trying to make an obstacle and stop the flow and releasing it again so that's how these high viscosity fluids work here's an example of how to paint these viscose fluids 
uh, on the YouTube you could find a dedicated chapter on painting persistent flow patterns. It is just demonstrating how easily you could create a muddy river. And that's the purpose of this painting scene. Right, so much about, much about viscous fluids. And let me visit another combined level. This is a Niagara experiment and a viscosous, uh, high viscosity fluid in the same time. I'm jumping in the puddle and yeah, three things here. So let me explain. First, you could see these floaty red balls. And you could notice that these red balls are driven by the currents the same velocity field that drives the fluid simulation is driving these red floaty spheres. And these are Niagara mesh particles. And we are applying the simulation velocity field and accelerating them with the simulation velocity. Another thing you could notice if I zoom in, these nice little details. YouTube compression might kill it, but believe me, you could see the sand particles here. And this is because we are using the same detail mapping as you have seen uh, on level 29 with combustion. But here we are adding uh, the details uh, which looks like a grainy sand. So uh, a different kind of details have been used. And of course, uh, the whole thing is like ray marged, so you could change the direction of the light and make it uh, differently lit. So we have like a viscous, a high viscosity fluid here. We have Niagara mesh particles obeying, and we have a detail map applied. Yeah. That's what we have. Um, having a look at the list, I've been testing UE5 and Ninja was working fine. Right now I don't have the possibility to release a separate branch because the marketplace doesn't support it yet. But I will do that as soon as the marketplace allows me. Mm, well, there might be a few things which I have not mentioned, but shortly that's it. And as a closing, I would like to load in another less stressful smoke chamber level. And again, just have a look at the FPS ometer. We have like 120 FPS with the previous pressure solver, and we are above 200 right now with the new solver. So it's like a the speed is almost doubled and I've been testing the whole thing on mobile devices on average mobile devices like an Android A50 and it was running with like 80 FPS so it was running quite well so I guess that the new pressure solver is doing well and probably Ninja performance is allowing us now to place more than one simulation to the gameplay levels and really use like three, four simulations together combined on the character and in the environment, hopefully. So shortly that's it. Um, introducing Ninja Life 1.3. Have a look at the changelog and uh, manual with all the details. Thank you for your patience and see you next time.